The War of the Wolf. Welcome, gentle listener. I am Baldemort, your faithful servant, and I wish to introduce you to the forces, factions, and faces of the Warhammer 40k universe. The grim darkness of the far future, where there is no time for peace. There is only time for war. Now, in January, I usually take things a little easier, but just know that I am working on some very sumptuous entries that I know you will enjoy. And do remember to like, subscribe, and comment if you wish to hear more from this wee YouTube show of ours, for I do indeed consider it as much the community's as my own. And so, today, we are to revisit an old tract, The War of the Wolf. Now, please do bear in mind that this information was written by Games Workshop before the rise of the Primarch, hence before the advent of the Primaris Marines. For now, there are many successor chapters of the Volca Fenrica, the Space Wolves. But before that point, there was only one. Yet even they did not end well, as we shall hear. So please enjoy this relaxing and informative narrative concerning the sons of the Rus, the Space Wolves. To quote, The Wolf Brothers in the aftermath of the Horus Heresy, the Space Marine Legions were broken down into smaller formations known as Chapters, so that no one could ever again hold power over an entire Legion. Some of the Legions divided many times and spawned many successors, while the Space Wolves divided only once. The sole successor chapter, named the Wolf Brothers, was forged during the Second Founding. It was the dream of the Primarch Lehman Russ that the Wolf Brothers would be the first in a series of chapters drawn from his genetic ancestry, and the Space Wolves, along with their successors, would create a cordon around the Eye of Terror to shield against future attacks from the traitor legions. Tragically, the gene seed of the Wolf Brothers was fatally flawed, leading to the manifestation of large numbers of Wolfen and other more terrible abominations within their ranks. Shortly after their creation, the chapter was disbanded by the Ordo Astartes, its stores of gene seed destroyed, and its surviving battle brothers given the choice between a death in glorious battle or a shameful execution. However, before the Ordo Astartes orders could be fully carried out, much of the chapter disappeared, the Wolf Brothers vanishing into the depths of space. Some within the Adeptus Terra accused Lehman Russ of warning the successor chapter or even aiding their escape, though no proof was ever uncovered. To this day, rumors persist of small bands of Wolf Brothers fighting with renegade chapters or living as pariahs in the shadow of the Eye of Terror. The War of the Wolf there are few enemies the Space Wolves loathe more than those who turn against their own kind. Traitors, Oathbreakers, and Turncoats. When Logan Grimnar learned that the Arch-Traitor Abaddon had found one of the Lost Wolf Brothers, he assembled the Champions of Fenris to deliver the Space Wolves justice. For the Space Wolves, one of their greatest, most closely guarded secrets is the fate of their one and only successor chapter, the Wolf Brothers. Created as part of the second founding, the Wolf Brothers gene seed proved unpredictable and unstable. Combining all of the worst aspects of the Canis Helix and the curse of the Wolfen. After the chapter was disbanded, hundreds of Wolf Brothers vanished entirely, taking with them prize gene seed created from the Space Wolves' own stockpiles. In the year 612, Millennium 41, word reached the Great Wolf that one of these lost brothers was found. For millennia, the Space Wolves had been watching over their wayward kin, secretly shielding them from both the wrath of the Imperium and the influences of chaos, though not always with success. So it was to be this time, and the glad news of the Wolf Brothers' discovery was tainted by word that the planet upon which he rested was in the hands of the Black Legion. Worse still, 
Rumor placed the arch-traitor Fabius Bile within the system, and Grimnar knew it could only be the wolf brother and his gene seed that Bile sought. Access to the successor chapter's gene seed would enable the traitorous geneticist to create an army of monstrously corrupt, mutated horrors to fight for the forces of chaos. The great wolf would be damned before he let this come to pass. Calling his wolf guard to his side, the old wolf ordered his great company gathered. So armed, Grimnar and his most trusted champions and a small fleet of ships set off into the Sea of Stars to find the brother wolf and slay any who dared stand in their way. The Well of Souls Keen hunters and able voidfarers, it did not take long for the champions of Fenris to find the planet on which the wolf brother was hidden, despite the stench of traitors hanging heavy around the Eye of Terror. Guarded by intelligence collected by his wolf scout, and following the auger scent left by the Black Legion craft, Grimnar and his wolves came upon the world of Lumerius. A frozen ball of frost and snow, barely warmed by the watery light from its distant blue star, Lumerius was where the wolf brother lay, imprisoned in the ice-locked ruin of a shipwreck thousands of years old. From the command bridge of his strike cruiser on the far edges of the system, Grimnar considered the reports of his wolf guard and the faint outline of the Styx-class heavy cruiser, Well of Souls, hanging like a dark splinter in the milky eye of Lumerius. Grimnar had chosen a small but elite flotilla of ships for speed and stealth, and lacked the brute strength to take on such a powerful vessel in open combat. Neither could he ignore it, however. In the end, it was his champion, Arjak Rockfest, that came up with a daring plan to take out the enemy vessel, one that brought fierce grins to the faces of the champions, and a thundering din as they beat their fists onto their chest plates in approval. Like shadows racing across the night sky, a salvo of boarding torpedoes silently bore down upon the Well of Souls, the Space Wolves had launched the missiles from the depths of space, letting their engines burn cold until they glided in under inertia alone. Inside the lead torpedo, Grimnar, Arjak, and a dozen Wolf Guard Shield brothers braced for impact. Seconds before they struck home, the Chaos Vessel's auger detected them, enemy crews scrambling to quad laser turrets and crack missile batteries as the void came alive with slashes of light and fire. The wolf guard joked over the Vox that they might have to swim the rest of the way, as the armored hulls were rocked by nearby explosions and raking Laz cannon fire. Grimnar's boarding torpedo had its tip sheared off by fusillade of turret fire, vaporizing the servitor pilot and sending the craft spinning. It tumbled through the open launch bay doors of the Well of Souls and crashed into the deck with a screech of tortured metal. With a bellowing war cry, Grimnar smashed his way free of the wreck, the first of the champions of Fenris, out into the hold. Tangled in a twisted ruin of gantries, the torpedo had skidded to a halt beneath a Heldrake roost. Dozens of demon engines hanging like monstrous mechanical chiropterans overhead. Black Legion Chaos Marines on the deck below fired bolters one-handed as they scaled ladders to meet their unidentified threat. Moments later, Arjak and the S.H.I.E.L.D. brothers rejoined their lord. The first Black Legion warrior to reach them had his head hacked from his shoulders by the Axe Morkai, while the second was torn to bloody ribbons by Grimnar Stormbolter. Stirred by the sounds of battle, a Heldrick descended from above, sweeping out its wings and snatching up a wolf guard terminator in its claws. Even as the demonic beast soared off over the launch bay, the veteran smashed it with his hammer, cursing the creature and the warp that had spawned it. The Heldrake. The Heldrake let out a metallic screech as it tore the Space Wolf apart in a shower of gore and shattered ceramite, its kin heeding its call and unfurling their wings. Bolt rounds hurtled up from below, blasting ragged holes in the gantry and exploding against the Shield Brothers' armor as the traitor Space Marines concentrated their fire on the invaders. In the air above, Heldrake circled like gargantuan carrion birds, swooping down to snatch up Wolfguard 
or washing the space worlds with flaming death. Arjak Rockfist held the center of the space worlds formation, the anvil shield bashing aside the razor jaws and claws of the Helldrakes as they snapped hungrily at the space worlds, while Foehammer scored fracturing blows against the creature's warp iron hides. Again and again, his hammer was cast at the demon engines, each time flashing back to his hand in an actinic blaze. With his warriors outnumbered and trapped against the wreckage of insertion, the old wolf had known from the start it would be but a matter of time before they were overwhelmed. Thinking on his feet, Grimnar struck at the supports of the gantry from which enemy reinforcements were arriving. In a shower of sparks, the walkway came free, the screams of twisting metal drowning out the cries of the Helldrakes as it hurtled to the deck below. Guns of Chaos while Logan Grimnar and his Wolfguard were locked in combat underneath the Helldrake Roost, the rest of the champions of Fenris had breached the Well of Souls in their own torpedoes. Rainolf Ironfang and Ingvar Thunderbrow led a pack of Wolfguard Void Claws, clad in hulking Terminator armor, and armed with paired Wolf Claws, they proved deadly in the close quarters fighting. Enemy crewmen would try to erect hasty barricades and corridors and void locks, only to crumble before the fury of the space walls. Only when squads of black legionaries confronted them did they advance slow. The deafening hammer of bolt gun fire and blinding flash of wolf claw filling the corridors. After each brutal skirmish, Raynolf would make some jest about the quality of their foes while grinning at Ingvar, and each time Ingvar would shake his head in silence, only once allowing the ghost of a smile to cross his features when Raynolf hurled a deckhand at one of his erstwhile overlords. Meanwhile, in the depths of the ship, Grimnar fought his way towards his intended target. Reduced to a handful of S.H.I.E.L.D. brothers, the Great Wolf's force smashed its way through the Black Legion defenses with hammer and shield. With arcing hammer blows, the Space Wolves caved in blast doors to clear a path. Finally, the Great Wolf and his packmates emerged into the Chaos Cruiser's gun-loading deck. Vast beyond reckoning, the deck spanned almost the full length of the vessel. Along the outer hull, towering macro cannons, each as large as a hab block, pointed out into the void. On overhead tracks, cranes and hoists transported shells the size of land raiders, while thousands of slaves hauled on chains of black iron under the lashes of their overseers. Grimnar pointed with his axe to where fresh ordnance was being carried up from the ship's magazine below. Here was where they would cripple the Well of Souls and take her out of the fight. The vessel's captain was no fool, however, and between Grimnar and his goal were a dozen Black Legion Terminators backed by throngs of maddened cultists. Bearing his fangs, Grimnar raised Axe Morkai above his head and charged. As the two sides closed, Bolt rounds and autogun fire whipped between them, detonating in clouds of scorched flesh or ricocheting from Terminator plate. Then, with a deafening crash, the two sides met. Against the disciplined elite of the Black Legion and the disorganized rabble of the cultists, the pride of the Space Wolves proved their skill and ferocity. Brutal hammer blows, flashing fangs, and crackling storm shields all took their toll as space wolves were dragged down with savage snarls on their lips. Though the Black Legion were a dire foe indeed, under the protection of the Shield Brothers, the master of the space wolves and his chapter slew them to a man. As Grimnar tore the Axe Morkai from the throat of the last Chaos Terminator in a spray of blood, he realized that only he and Arjak remained standing. Bloody but unbowed, the Great Wolf gave the sign to Arjak, who hurled Fohammer with all his prodigious strength, into the critical workings of the macro cannon shell hoist. As the chains broke, a massive shell fell back down into the ship's primary magazine with a deafening detonation. Heart of the Void Raynolf Ironfang was the first to step onto the Well of Souls bridge, his hulking grey form lumbering through the still smoking remains of the void lock. At his side, Ingvar Thunderbrow and a score of other void claws thundered across the deck to meet the Chaos forces. As the Space Wolves pressed their assault, Voidheart, favorite of the Despoiler's lieutenants, 
watched them come. Clad in Baroque black armor, with a helm of twisted horns and the leering face of a demon, Voidheart sat on the vessel's command throne, overseeing his warriors below. From all sides of the huge chamber, Chaos Space Marines marched forward, blades and bolters ready to end the invaders. Reynolf howled his challenge and charged, his brothers close upon his heels. Everywhere the air was filled with the crash of mass-reactive bolter rounds and the screech of ceramite being rent asunder. Eyes fixed on the demon-faced Chaos Lord, Raynor forged a bloody trail across the deck. His heavy Terminator armor turned the blades and bolt rounds hammering down upon him, while his frost blade parried blows and flashed out to sink into heretic flesh. By the time Raynor reached the base of the command throne, his armor was scarred by dozens of blows, and his sword was crimson with blood. Voidheart leveled his demon blade at Raynor as he descended from the throne promising him an eternity of torment within the warp. Raynor's response was blunt, crude, and to the point. Voidheart easily repelled Raynor's first flurry of attacks, and at once the Wolfguard knew how dangerous an adversary he faced. His foe's demon blade cut darkly through the air around him, black warp flame dancing hypnotically along its edge. Voidheart's hatred of the Space Wolf was almost palpable in its intensity a feeling Raynor held in equal measure for the thrice-cursed traitor standing before him. For a span of agonizing minutes, Raynor tried to breach Voidhard's guard, but the demon sword seemed to move with a mind of its own, always there to turn his frost blade. Sparing a second's glance across the bridge, he could see his brothers equally pressed by the massed ranks of the Black Legion, and was forced to accept that there would be no aid against Voidhard. This moment of distraction was what the Chaos Lord had been waiting for, and in an instant, his weapon flicked forward in an attempt to pierce Raynor's skull. Only the Wolf Guard's acute senses saved his life, and he twisted partly out of the way. Even so, the unnatural blade pierced his helm and scored a bloody line across his face, burning away his left eye. Howling in rage and pain, Raynor bared his fangs and snarled at Voidheart, deep within Raynor's mind. The shadow of the wolf stirred to life, and the space marine hurled himself at his foe like a wounded thunderwolf, the two exchanging a flurry of blows. However, it was only when an explosion from far below threw the combatants off balance that the tide turned. A momentary opening allowed Raynor to hack off Voidheart's sword arm at the shoulder. Clutching the ruined, bleeding stump, the Chaos Lord fled the bridge, his crew moving to cover his escape. As another explosion from below rocked the deck, Raynolf heard the crackling Vox message from the Great Wolf ordering them to withdraw. Cursing the escape of Voidheart, Raynolf hurried to obey the command of his Wolf Lord. Supporting their wounded, Raynolf, Ingvar, and the remaining Void Claws enacted a fighting retreat. Down through decks of fire and ruin they battled, clearing the way with the savage fervor of cornered wolves. As the Space Marines reached the aft launch decks of the Well of Souls, the Chaos Craft was already listing dangerously towards Lumerias. The damage had been done. Debris raining down all around them, the Wolf Guard fought their way onto the waiting Storm Wolves as the Great Wolf led a defense of the extraction point with the surviving champions. Raynolf was the last to step onto the ramp, pausing only to spit contemptuously onto the deck. Fiends of the Deep. Wolf scouts had made planetfall on Lumerius, pinpointing the shipwreck where the wolf brother slumbered, frozen in time. Floating in the middle of a vast polar sea, the void ship was more ice and snow than steel, having drifted amongst the iceberg of Lumerius for millennia. In the heart of the wreck, colossal vaults housed countless stasis caskets, and in one of them slept the lost son of Ras. It was in these vast chambers that Fabius Bile and the Black Legion were searching for Abaddon's prize. Outside, the Chaos forces had fortified the tundra around the ship against assault. Trenches and emplacements reaching out to where the frozen island ended and the frigid blue sea began. From high in the atmosphere, Grimnar surveyed the augurs of his storm morph, considering where to strike. His golden eyes 
noted the dark prow of the vessel pushing up from the center of its icy prison. Like all space wars, Grimnar was well versed in the ways of the sea and glacial drifts like the one he now considered. He knew much of the ship was hidden below the waves, and it was here that the champions of Fendrus would strike. The Wolf Lord ordered the Stormwolf's pilot to come in low over the sea. He rapidly formed an image in his mind's eye of the size and shape of the entombed wreck. Just below the surface was an ice shelf with tunnels leading deeper into the wreck. This would be Grimnar's point of attack, and with his brothers he would drop down to the shelf below and walk beneath the frozen sea into the wreck. Covering his landing, Grimnar had ordered thunderstrike formations, combined teleportation and drop pot assault to target the chaos defenses. An orbital barrage arced down from the heavens to pummel the traitor's trenches, preparing the way. As huge chunks of snow-covered steel were hurled skyward, the first Space Wolf drop pods crashed down, and Terminators appeared in flashes of light. The cold air was soon filled with the smoking trails of shells and plasma bolts, and red splashes of blood stained the ice. In answer to the carnage, Chaos Space Marines emerged from the wrecked vessel to bolster the defenses. While the maelstrom of mayhem and death raged overhead, Krimnar and his Wolfguard attacked from below. Marching up out of the frigid sea into the huge caves honeycombing the iceberg, hundreds of meters across, the tunnels were part ice, part twisted steel, their upper limits lost in shadow overhead. Near the front of the advance, Arjak suddenly paused, motioning for his shield brothers to still their tongues. As silence descended, the others heard it too, a hissing, grinding wail coming steadily closer. Through the distorted walls of ice, the wolf guard could now see dark shapes approaching, moving like metal kraken beneath transparent waves. In a blast of crystal shards, a mauler fiend emerged, its magma cutters searing a hole through the ice and releasing billowing clouds of steam that obscured the space wolf's vision. In the close confines of the tunnel, the wolf guard could do little to avoid these weapons designed to crack open fortifications, and two shield brothers were sliced open by super-hot blasts of energy. Arjak pushed forward, but before he could strike, another one erupted from the ground beneath his feet, grabbing him in its pitted jaws. The wolf guard rallied around him, their hammers fracturing the steel beast's hide but failing to bring it down. In the blinding mist, Grimnar's nose guided his attacks as he followed the oil and blood stench of the machine. Grimnar let out a battle cry and struck out into the fog, feeling the axe Morkai sink deep into warp-forged iron. Hearing their lord join the fray, the other wolf guard let out their howls of rage and attacked with even greater fury. Arjak, still trapped within the demon engine's grinding jaws, hurled foe hammer into the mist before thrusting his gauntlet deep into its mouth. In a flash of light, the hammer rematerialized in his fist, smashing apart the monster's head from within. Wolfguard swarmed over the remaining wall of fiend, a mighty blow from Grimnar finally sending it crashing to the ground with a pained roar. Gathering up the remaining Wolfguard, Grimnar advanced down the tunnels made by the Mauler Fiends, following them into the rusting heart of the ship. Tomb of Wolves Inside the ruined vessel, the Space Wolves climbed through corridors twisted and torn by centuries beneath the ice. Ancient statues in relief stared forlornly at the Wolf Guard from under layers of snow. Grimnar recognized some of the tunnels and chambers they pushed their way through, the icons and regalia of the Imperium upon them. Others were alien, strangely asymmetrical shapes and Xenos symbols dominated their walls. This had been an accursed vessel even before it found a resting place upon Lumerius. Countless dark deeds had been wrought here. Of that, Grimnar was sure. The Great Wolf was the first to hear the hum of plasma generators from up ahead, a thread of sound hidden under the muffled thump and rumble of the battle raging overhead. Motioning for his brothers to draw close and draw their weapons, he led the way down into a vast fractured chamber. The room was the broken remains of a stasis vault, where thousands of people would sleep away centuries of interstellar travel. 
concentric circles of stasis caskets ringed the vault from floor to ceiling, vanishing up into the dim, ice-locked roof and down into the debris-choked depths below. Precious few of the caskets still thrummed with life, the distorted remains of their occupants barely visible in the shadows. The rest were wreathed in darkness. Several levels below, Grimnar could see the flickering lights of Laz cutters and the unmistakable form of Fabius Bile's spidery harness as he directed his vassals to carve open one stasis casket after another. The Wolf Lord knew that it would only be a matter of time before the traitor found the Wolf Brother, a tragedy he could not allow to come to pass. Roaring a challenge, Grimnar fired a burst of bolter rounds, though he was far out of range. Even so, it had the desired effect, and Bile turned from his task, his Black Legion bodyguard closing ranks around him. Like a ceramite avalanche, the wolf guard descended down the side of the cylindrical vault, crashing down from one level to the next along rusted gantries and ramps. As they came, the Chaos Space Marines poured bolt of fire into the wolf guard, rounds exploding as they tore the chamber apart. Grimnar was the first to reach the traitors, landing on the lower level with a reverberating clang. The first black legionaries to charge him met with a bloody fate, their remains tumbling to the floor. In moments, Grimnar was upon Fabius Bile, a brutal axe blow hacking off one of the progenitor's arachnid appendages. Quick as a serpent, Bile counterattacked, wielding a ghastly-looking weapon that crackled with warp energy. Inflicting agonizing pain, the barest touch was enough to bring the Wolf Lord to his knees. His fangs gritted in pain as the weapon's curse raged through him. Before Grimnar could rise, Bile raised a dripping syringe. He had come here for the Wolf Brother, but with the Master of the Space Wars kneeling at his feet, he could capture an even greater prize. At that moment, Fohammer smashed Bile's pseudo limb aside. Arjak barreling forwards to place himself between Grimnar and his foe. With the Black Legion now giving ground before the ferocity of the Space Wars, Bile made his own plans for retreat. The Primogenitor had not lived so long or with such care to chance his life when the odds turned against him. With a contemptuous sneer, Baal keyed a teleporter Homer on his belt, vanishing in a flare of crimson light. Arjak helped Grimnar to his feet, the Great Wolf nodding to his champion in wordless thanks, before charging forwards to finish off the remaining traitor forces. What would have taken Baal days took Grimnar but a few hours, his enhanced senses finding the Wolf Brother's stasis casket from amongst the thousands in the vault. With a drop of blood, the Wolf Lord opened the genetic lock and looked upon the face of the chapter's long-lost battle brother. Sorrow filled Grimnar's heart, as he noted the signs of the Wolfen upon the ancient warrior, his Richter star frozen in time by the stasis field. It would be no kindness to awaken him, and so Logan closed the casket once more, ordering it return to the Fang. There would be no redemption for this brother of the Space Wars, but at least he had been spared the corruption by the powers of chaos. End quote. I have been Baudemort, your faithful servant, so like, subscribe, and comment if you wish to hear more in the future. I hope to see you then. Now, no matter what you do today, do try to make some time for fun. Toodaloo.